Hello and welcome to the Morning Star series, Why Should I Invest With You? I'm Emma Wall and I'm joined today by Alex Wright, manager of the Fidelity Special Situations Fund and the Closed End Fund Fidelity Special Values. Hi, Alex. Thanks for having me. Happy anniversary on the Fidelity Special Situations Fund, three years. It has been an interesting three years if we look at the backdrop for the UK. And as an all cap fund, you can go up and down the cap scale. One of the notable absences from the portfolio has been commodities where people have lost a lot of money and then more recently made a lot of money. Why have you chosen not to include commodities in the funds? You're right. My exposure to the, the mining side of commodities is very low. It's about 1% of special situations of the day. And that has been the case for pretty much the, all of the three years that I've been running the fund. Um, and I think the big difference between mining and oil, an area that I do like, where we've got about 10% of the fund, is the returns that the companies are, are currently making. So actually, <laughs> even though sort of share prices are still well down on previous years, when you look at the returns and the profitability of the miners at current spot prices, it's actually quite high and certainly a lot higher than the, the long term 20 year history. Um, and I think that reflects the fact that actually the reason mining has come back in the last year, which is very different again from oil, is because demand is surprised positively. So China has not slowed as much as people expected and infrastructure spending has been very strong there. But when you look at sort of how high is that demand versus history and how sustainable is that demand at current levels, I think there's a big question mark around that because the fixed asset investment in China is very high. Infrastructure is really, really good. Spend has been going on for 10 years plus. And so that demand demand outlook to me looks um, potentially risky when the supply side of mining continues to increase supply and so the sort of demand supply gap is, is ever narrowing. Having a look at those oil stocks then, oil of course has been an uh, incredibly controversial space in that this time last year we were looking at bottom lows around $25 uh, a barrel, now we're sort of 55 60 Is that your base case for investing because of course certain companies can only survive if the oil price sustains those levels. Yeah, so oil is an area that um, I've had a lot more confidence in and I've got about 10% of special situations in, invested there. Um, and our oil team have had a very strong view since late 14 when we saw the big oil price falls that in order for sort of capex to be re-incentivized, investment to be re-incentivized in the space, we needed to see at least 55 60 um, dollars per barrel. Um, a lot of work around particularly the shale producers in the US, which I think are the global swing producers. So it's very clear that costs have fallen and that these companies can invest at much lower oil prices. But when you look at the global picture, what I'd like to see is the big falls we've seen in supply because of those cuts in capex really writing the demand and supply balance. And then when you do that specific work, that really says to us that, that, that oil prices did need to be a lot higher than they were 12 months ago. And so I've had confidence they would rise to these levels. And the equities still look very attractive. Um, even though the oil price has increased and share prices have done well, you're, you're still seeing sort of big dividend yields coming out of the majors, very good valuations from some of the smaller cap stocks. The nature of a special situations or special values fund is that you quite often have controversial sector exposure, controversial name exposure and from commodities, which everyone loves to talk about, to financials. You're more positive on financials, aren't you, where some people are still keeping them at arm's length? Yeah, so in fact, for the entire time I've been running money since um, 2008, actually, I've had um, a big weight in all my funds to, to financials, and that very much continues today in special situations with about 35% in that area. Um, because I think it is an area that's complicated and therefore needs a lot of analysis, and the deep analysis and teams we've got at Fidelity helping me really allow me to, to get under the hood of these models. And then obviously with the financial crisis um, and, and the banks in particular being sort of uh, blamed uh, for that, people have just shied away from these companies. And so, yeah, I've got about 10% in banks and then about 25% across a wide variety of other financial business models. Uh, and one of the UK banks you have exposure to, I suppose, the only well-known high street bank is Lloyds, but you did halve exposure to Lloyds on the Brexit vote, didn't you? Yeah, so banks um, at their heart are a play on the economy where they're, they're based. And, and Lloyds has about a 25% market share in the UK, only really um, 
operates in this country and therefore sort of the lower level of interest rates we've seen post Brexit so a halving of interest rates that has affected their margins and also the lower GDP growth that we're seeing it's maybe not as bad as some people feared but it is definitely lower than it was previously so again that's crimped loan growth and other income so there has been quite a downgrade to, to earnings of around sort of 15 to 20 percent for Lloyd's post the, the Brexit vote that said the stock is very cheap still on those earnings about 10 times, yielding about 5%. So I think the stock is still attractive, just not as good as it would have been if GDP growth and interest rates had been higher. Alex, thank you very much. Thank you. This is Emma Walls for Morningstar. Thank you for watching.